Some of you out there are wondering, what have we learned so far in the spring when it comes to Alabama quarterback, running back, and wide receiver? We're going to tell you what you should have learned here in just a minute. Locked on Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robbins has me, Jimmy Stein has him, and thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Also want to thank a new sponsor, HelloFresh. Yeah, I've been waiting on one of these food delivery services to get on board because uh, I want to order me some food, baby. So uh, I'm always hungry. Uh, anywho, Jimmy, I talked about it right there in the cold open. Is that what you call it? Mini monologue? That's, uh, the, that, you that's know. the lingo. We're pros. We're pros now. <laughs> Your boy, Clint Lamb from over at On3, has a little running series about what we've learned so far this spring, and he decided to start right at the top with quarterback, running back, and wide receiver. And this is interesting to me. Uh, I think we will start at quarterback, too, and I'm going to let you just go on your little uh, soliloquy like you always do. And um, even though we've already talked about this, I find it interesting because today – all the serious XM college stations have sort of begun to funnel back towards football, yeah. meaning there's really no more basketball talk. They, I mean, they, they, they don't even want to talk transfer portal because the minute you talk about it, somebody's either already committed or they're back in the portal or something. So they, it's almost like they don't want to discuss it. So everybody was talking about spring games and uh, there, there was a lot of talk about who's QBU and, a couple of them mentioned Alabama, and then uh, a couple of them, I can't remember who the hosts were, were talking about, okay, well, what, what's Alabama's deal this year? And the guest they had on said, oh, I think it's going to be Ty Simpson. He was like, why? He was like, I don't, I don't really know why. I mean, I, I don't know. And I, I'm the same way. I don't know why. I also think it's going to be Ty Simpson. But um, is that one of the things we've learned this spring so far, that you think it will be Ty Simpson? We haven't learned that it's going to be Ty Simpson. That's not like, uh, well, okay, practice has started and it's obvious Ty's going to be the guy. As a matter of fact, we've learned not the opposite of that either, but but what, what we apparently know at this point is that the competition's ongoing. And I wouldn't say based on what I hear and what I know that uh, either one of them is what I would call ahead of the other. Uh, I think it's a tight race right now. You can look at that a couple of different ways. Uh, that Milrow has improved. And and I think everyone that's seen him play seems to agree with that, that he's better. Is he enormously better? Is he, wow, he's a new kid? No, no, but that wouldn't have been a fair expectation. I think the fair expectation was that he's one year better, that he's better this year than he was last year. That apparently seems to be the case, and that's good news. Uh, this is also some good news. If Milrow and Ty are sort of uh, tied or, hey, it's pretty even, that's good news for Simpson, right? Because he's a year younger. He's had less time in the system. He hasn't played as much as Milrow, yet he's already seen as Milrow's equal. If that's the case, that's really good news for Ty Simpson. He's the guy that had to make up ground, you know, to get tied to the top before he could move on. I hope that it will be Ty. That's what I think in terms of, like, Who's going to be Alabama's quarterback in 2023? My answer is Ty today. That could change, but but today it is. And to me, what I don't want to answer, just simply because it's such a wild guess, is when. When does Ty become the quarterback? Uh, I don't believe he's going to be named the starter before or after a day. Uh, I don't believe that. I think if he is announced the starter in fall camp, it would be somewhat late in fall camp. Uh, it could even bleed into the games. I, I don't rule that out. Uh, I hate to guess as to when it will be Ty, but I am comfortable predicting that Ty Simpson will be Alabama's starting quarterback. But, you know, you'll probably need both guys. I, I think if you're an Alabama fan, the good news is when Nick Saban says both guys played well in that scrimmage, that's good news because guys, this season, uh, you know, the number one thing that affects seasons is injuries. What happens during the season? You lose this guy, you lose that guy, you lose the whole 
inside linebacker group, you lose the quarterback, whatever. But we don't talk about that enough during the summer. For whatever reason, we get in this bubble and we focus on who the starters are going to be without recognizing for a single minute that, well, actually, when the games start, kids start getting hurt, sometimes in droves. So you need two quarterbacks. Alabama needed two quarterbacks last year. Alabama needed Mac Jones in 2019. Alabama needed both Tua and Jalen in 2017 and 2018. Uh, Jalen Hurts didn't start the first play of the first game in 2016. And in 2015, the quarterback was Jake Coker. Uh, the backup got a start against Ole Miss. I mean, you need two guys. And when Nick Saban says both guys played well, that's good news. That's good news. You need both guys playing well because you're probably going to need both guys. Yeah, I was muted for a second, but I caught it. That was real quick, and you are in Indianapolis. I am in Indianapolis. Uh, I've, it looks like, I got this little desk lamp with me. It looks like I'm being interrogated. Um, I wish y'all could see it. Um, I'm, I'm interrogating you, uh, but you're right. I think you do need two back there. I keep telling my wife, I need two of y'all. I'm sorry. This is the way it is. She's not falling for it yet. She doesn't even want to back up. Uh, she said, if you go to a backup, you might you better be prepared to start her. Um, Ballsy. Yeah, it is. That is, um, Jimmy. I, I, don't, I know I said this earlier, but uh, we got a new sponsor in Hello Fresh. I'm not even supposed to like go on a live read about it, and I'm not. But I just find that to be so cool. Appreciate uh, Hello Fresh for being there. Also, want to thank FanDuel. Always want to thank FanDuel. Uh, look, grand slams, no hitters, double plays are back. There's no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. That's because right now, new customers can step up to the plate with the no sweat first bet up to $1,000. Just go to fanduel.com slash locked on, sign up, place your bet, and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if you don't win. Aaron, you can bet on things like Aaron Judge to pick up where he left off with a home run or a, a, a pitcher to go over on strikeouts or – um, you know, uh, just the game to go over or under if you want to. So don't miss your chance to get in on a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 when you join FanDuel today. Just go to fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up. FanDuel is the official partner of Major League Baseball. And I didn't know that till right now. <laughs> um, okay, so we talked a little quarterback. Now let's move on down to uh, the running back. That's uh, the next thing that everybody loves to talk about. And, um, you know, running back is going to be interesting this year. Look, uh, the Alabama lost Trey Sanders. Boy, Trey Sanders, we hardly knew he. Um, of course, we lost Jameer Gibbs. But I still think this is one of the more talented rooms that Alabama has. Um, you've got Chase McClellan and Roydale Williams. Uh, you, you've got uh, – shoot. The, the new guys coming in, Richard Young and, um, gosh, who am I forgetting, Jimmy? Justice Haynes. Jam, Jam, Jam. Uh, Jam, Justice, and Jace. Jam's Justice and Jace. That's right. I, I wondered where you were going with that. So they're the J, they're the J position, the wide receivers of the B position, but the wide receivers have cornered the market on, uh, first names starting with J, Jam, Jace. Roy Dillon, and two R's. Forget, it's a full house. It's three J's and two R's. It's a full house. Don't forget Roy Dell, where the J is silent. <laughs> yeah, this is the way I look about running back. First of all, to start the whole thing in terms of what we learned, Nick Saban himself said, oh, I don't even worry about running back. I mean, he he almost scoffed at the idea when someone said, how are the running backs looking? And, and his response in the press conference post-scrimmage was, I don't even worry about those guys. That that's That's the last thing I'm worried about. That's awesome news. That's awesome. And the way I look at it is there's two guys I'm super excited about violating the rule of, you know, the best players, the one we haven't seen. But 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 I, I sort of go by evidence, you know, well, like what's the evidence that, that a kid's a real good player? And here's the way I, I'm I'm really excited about Justice Haynes and Jam Miller and in both of them and, and not really in one order or the other. I, I'm convinced based on evidence that I know at this point, that both kids are really, really good, Jam and Justice. 
But the way I look at it, Luke, is here's the good news. The good news is Jace McClellan. The good news is we know that Jace is good. We've seen Jace run for 80 yards for a touchdown against Texas. And that's not the only good plays made in his career. Jace has been a good, productive, solid Alabama back. I think we know what we're getting in Jace, and Jace is good. Is he great? Is he Derrick Henry? Is he Mark Ingram? Is he TJ Yeldon? Probably not, but he's good. He's good. If Justice and Jam can beat out Jace, holy moly, we've really got some. And the guy I haven't even talked about yet is Roy Dell. And to be honest, even you know, if it's against, let's let's just pick out a game, let's say uh Arkansas. I would be, you know, if, if other backs were 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 sick or hurt or whatever, CC game with Roy Dell at running back, I'd feel pretty good about it. I, I wouldn't look at it like, oh no. I would look at it like, huh, I wonder what this is gonna look like. He's physical, he picks up the blitz, he can catch the ball. I, I think with Roy Dell, we'd be fine. And I'm sort of looking at him as like he's our fourth back. He's probably not fourth today because Jam and Justice probably have to do more to move ahead of him. But the good news is let's split it into two camps. There's the guys that are proven good players, Jason Roydell. We can win with those guys. I really feel that way. But then Jam and Justice, that, that's what could move us to a new level. That, that, that They potentially could make running back not solid, but spectacular. Uh, but one, one word of warning where, where fans can get a little off, off key here is that fans tend to judge running backs by carries and, and, and production. On, but the fact of the matter is you've got to pick up blitzes. You've got to block for your quarterback or you're not going to play. Let me tell you, you have 180 yards on 22 carries and, and you think, what a player. If that guy completely whiffs on a third down block and the quarterback gets hit and is lost for the season, you think that guy had a good game? It was awful. He just cost us a whole whole season maybe. I mean, it, it, it's it's critical that you pick up blocks when you're the running back. Uh, it's also critical that you don't fumble. If, if you rush for 180 yards but you fumble twice and the other team wins by a score, that's not helping us either. So – don't focus solely on, on, on the carries and the yards. There's other things that are vital. So who's best at that right now? I mean, I do, exclude exclude uh, Justice Haynes and Richard Young. I mean, because we don't know. We, we right. And frankly, to be honest, I'm not sure they know yet because, look, I, I'm not going to – all we've seen, we've seen them all play. Um, we have not seen them play every game. And frankly, those were two of the top three running backs in the country. So it's not like – they probably were called upon to do a lot of pass right. protection, right? Um, but now it's a different animal. So they may not know how good they are. So let's take them out of the equation. The, the ones that are coming back, um, who do you think is the best out of that group? I mean, I, I would dare I say, dare I say, Jace McClellan is the best receiver of the group? Yeah, I would agree with that. I think Jace is the best receiver. And there there is a block, I, I think Roy Dell, is far and away the best third down blocker late in the season last year. Roy Dell sort of took over, not completely, but Roy Dell played a ton of third downs down the stretch. Why? Because he, he stones blitzers. He's good at it. I mean, he, he does it at a pro level. He, he, he is easily the best, but it's a balance, right? Because I'll be honest when I say, I don't think Roy Dell is as good with the ball in his hands as the other two guys are. I think Jason jam are better playmakers than Roy Dell. But Roy Dell is so good at picking up the blitz, he's going to play. He's going That alone is going to get him on the field on some third downs. Also think Roy Dell shows some toughness that maybe the other guys don't have on the short yardage plays. So I see Lou Roy Dell being this ultimate Swiss Army knife utility guy that is situational, whereas Jason and Jam are more of the traditional, hey, we got to get them the ball. They make something happen when the ball's in their hands. I think Jace is good enough of a blocker that it's not going to keep him off the field, but it's probably the number one thing he's got to work on. And Jam, we haven't really seen enough when it comes to that because we've really seen him mostly as a garbage time guy. But So we know Jam's really good, I think, without ball in his hands. I'm imagining prove on the blitz pickups and and even maybe the ball protection. I mean that that's the best way to sit down. I sort of like it myself whenever 
you see a Bama running back fumble in that next series, he's not out there. I mean, you got to, hey, you fumble the ball, welcome to the bench. They, they, they have to know that if, if I'm going to play, I've got to protect the football. If I don't protect the football, I don't play. doesn't matter how many times they think I can possibly hit a 70-yard home run. If I'm, if I'm fumbling the football, I'm not going to play. Okay, if you're going to use that logic, and I'm not going to go back a segment, but then I think that even gives more credence to my Ty Simpson's going to start theory because we did see uh, Jalen Milrow fumble probably yep. more often than we wanted anybody to. Well, I mean, one is too many. You know, it's <laughs> like when Montgomery Burns told uh, Homer Simpson, you've, had, you've been in charge here and we've had three nuclear meltdowns. One is too many. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyway. <laughs> Let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk a wide receiver. And we're back. So, Jimmy, let's do talk a little wide receiver here. That's one thing that some of the other guys were talking about when it comes to Alabama starting quarterback. I mean, sometimes your quarterback's only as good as your starting wide receivers, and we're not really sure what we got just yet. Here is uh, a line I used today, and, uh, and Clint Lamb uh, stole it. <laughs> no, he, no, he didn't steal. He's like that line. We're, we're, I'm using that. that that's good. We're, we're going. With, and that's this. We went into last season overrating our wide receivers. I think we were being hopeful or what some people call wish casting. We're like, OK, we lost JMO and Mechie. And then we practically lost the national championship game because we had no answer behind them. Yet we went into last year thinking, but we're going to be good at wide receiver. And this is why. And we talked ourselves into believing that it's simply a clone of John Mechie. Uh, he wasn't. We talked ourselves into believing that in year two, Ja'Cory Brooks was going to be ready to be a big time guy. He wasn't. Uh, we talked ourselves into believing that the wave of new freshman receivers that were going to play were going to be Smitty and Ruggs and Judy. Well, that may be the case, but we need to remember that a lot of those receivers that went on to be first round picks from Alabama, they weren't so spectacular as freshmen, not all of them. Yet we expected last year's freshman group to be productive, great players from the jump. And I think we overrated our receivers and we should have known or accepted a year ago, hey, guys, wide receiver is probably going to be an issue this year. Now, wide receiver was an issue. So this year, what are we doing? We're underrating our receivers. Last year, we overrated. This year, we're underrating. There's too much negativity. Look. Malik Benson, I go by evidence. Malik Benson is already being mentioned by Nick Saban as one of our best receivers, and he's only practiced at Alabama about six times. And he's he's already one of our best per Saban, not per whispers, not per, hey, I've got a source who says, and, and I do have sources that say those things, but Nick Saban himself says Malik Benson is one of our best wide receivers. He has a good chance to be – are the next in our line of great first-round talents. Jermaine Burton last year may not have been ready to be our best receiver or be John Mechie, but guess what? He's another year better, and this year all we're asking him to do is play in a supporting role to Benson and Brooks and just sort of be the second guy or the third guy. He has over 1,500 yards receiving in the SEC, and he's kind of our third guy now. Ja'Cory Brooks, and Luke brought this up last show, made a lot of great points about why are we negative at all on Ja'Cory Brooks? The only reason we'd be negative on Ja'Cory is we're setting some bar up there around, and we're upset that he's not Ridley. Well, you can be really good and not be a first-round pick in the NFL draft. Uh, you know, Ja'Cory Brooks has been a productive, good player for Alabama since the day he showed up. Uh, we know about the game-winning catch versus Auburn. Lots of big catches last year. He's all over Bryce's highlight reel. I think Benson, Brooks, and Burton are good. To say nothing of those players we expected so much from last year. The best thing about freshmen is they become sophomores. Prentice, Bond, and Kendrick Law all know what they're doing now. Now they know what they're doing. And they're not even the first three guys. They're just supplemental playmakers that are going to come in fresh after the first guy. So I think wide receiver is actually a tremendous asset on this team. And those that are still worried about it are, are too focused about what, what happened last year. Again, we overrated them a year ago, but we're underrating them now. Yeah. It's funny. Um, 
when you when you said that about everybody thinks they're going to be you know Judy Rugs, uh, Devante, uh, you know here's the deal. First of all, we we do reminisce nostalgically. I don't even know if those two is that an oxy, that's not an oxymoron. Is that redundant? I don't. Know, it doesn't matter. Reminisce nostalgically. Yeah, it's close, but I I think those are. are I'll allow it. I'll allow it. Yep. Let's tamp down. Let's tamp down what we're doing. Um, if you used a third word, I'd say tamp that down. <laughs> Anywho, you know, I just looked this up. We, we tend to, uh, we're going to always compare those uh, freshmen to those guys, right? You know how many catches Jerry Judy had as a freshman? Take a guess. 17. 14. With two touchdowns. And Henry Ruggs, Henry Ruggs had 12 catches. Now, the difference was, see, with Judy, people remember he caught a long ball against Auburn for a touchdown. Do you remember that in the Iron Bowl as a freshman? It was, um, so you, you're always going to remember guys who catch touchdowns in the Iron Bowl, right? Then with Ruggs, if you remember, like the first six catches of his career were all touchdowns. Mm -hmm. I mean, or the first seven, something bananas. Okay? So, and then Ruggs scored a touchdown in the Natty when Tua comes in and uh, Devontae Smith is always going to be remembered finally for the game winner against Mississippi State as a freshman. And then of course the game winner for the national championship. And of course, later on, he did some other great things. But what I'm saying is we compare him to those guys and statistically they were on par with them. The problem was they didn't do it in the same. First of all, that team didn't win a national championship. You know, the, 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 what we're talking about. Secondly, um, they didn't do it on the same stage. Now, Ja'Cory Brooks uh, caught a touchdown against Auburn, which is a big deal. He'll always be remembered for that. Um, but it, it, because I think maybe that game was so bad, uh, even though we won, maybe people don't remember it as romantically. I, I don't know. But it's just funny how we – and here's another thing. You talked about Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley did have an awesome freshman year, just awesome. He was fantastic. But he also had – you know who everybody had to focus on when he was out there running routes? Derrick Henry. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, and Calvin also showed up at 20 years old. That's true, too. <laughs> he was <laughs> Brandon Miller before Brandon Miller. Um, he was. He was a 20-year-old freshman. And, and, yeah, that's not taking anything away from Calvin. And it is new to go from high school to playing at this level. And it is, it is new. But, when I, but hey, you know, he – I don't think Kobe – I don't know, to be honest, but I don't think Kobe Prentice, Isaiah Bond, or or Kendrick Law, any number 20. It's funny. Okay, so I'm, I, I, looked, I just told you about Jerry Judy, right? Jerry Judy had um, – he only played in eight games, but he had 14 receptions, 264 yards, and two touchdowns, okay? But let's, let's take somebody else. Let's take Henry Ruggs. He played in 14 games, had 12 catches – Six of them were for touchdowns. That's pretty unbelievable. Now let's just plug in Kobe yeah. Prentice and let's just see. I, I'm looking at this. Kobe Prentice played in 13 games, had 31 receptions and two touchdowns. And had, no, one, no one's comparing Prentice to those guys. And I'm not comparing him to that either. Me either. Yeah. We, we somehow bitched our way through the season and didn't notice stuff. But Kobe Prentice catching 31 balls – so in his freshman year is incredible. And but now he's a sophomore. Now he knows what he's doing. But here's the thing, Jimmy. Here's the people compare like when you say, well, for instance, I was going to talk about this with the running backs. Like who who does each running back remind you of? And I was, you know, Roy Dell, uh, Brian Robinson. And I think nobody's going to take offense to that. Because Brian Robinson was a pretty good back. And I think Roy Dell Williams, pretty good back. But you know, I was going to say, um, Richard Young sort of reminds me of maybe a cross between Trent Richardson and Derrick Henry. And everybody's going to go, oh, God, oh, you can't compare. I, I'm not comparing necessarily. I'm just saying, like, you're talking about styles. Or when it comes to Justice Haynes, I think it's very easy to compare him to Mark Ingram. Yeah. But when you compare these receivers, for instance, and you say, hey, Kobe Prentice put up better numbers than Jerry Judy. Oh, he's not better than Jerry Judy. I'm not saying that. I'm saying as a freshman. As a freshman, he put up better numbers. Now, let's also go ahead and say this. Let's also be fair. Jerry Judy, for most of his freshman year, was trying to catch passes from J a Jalen Hurts that was undeveloped. Right. And, and Kobe Prentice was catching passes from the guy I think is the best player in Alabama history. So yeah. there, there's a give and take. There's a lot of context. Yeah, a lot, a lot of context. 
there's a lot of context here, both quote good and bad, but I think it all goes to prove the, the point, which is we overrated our wide receiver situation last year. It was pretty dire and it sort of lived down to what we should have expected. But this year, everybody that's still like, um, we don't have proven receivers. Jermaine Burton has, I mean, why, why people give this guy a hard time? He's caught over 1,500 yards worth of balls on SEC defensive backs. He is a proven good player. Is he great? No. If he was great, he'd have been in this NFL draft right. and he'd be off on day one or day two. No, he's not great, but he's good because it takes a good player to do what he's done. Ja'Cory Brooks is good. We know he's good. Now, Malik Benson, I know he hadn't played, but he's a Juco. And like I said, six practices in, and Nick Saban is like, uh, boy, Benson's good. <laughs> I mean, Pretty rare. We, we know Benson. There's evidence that Malik Benson's going to be good. So when you throw in Benson with those other guys, we're good. Now we haven't even got to the most exciting part. Those freshmen that we hoped a lot for, they're probably going to start living up to their high school recruiting ranks now. Now they actually know the routes. They know the plays. They're comfortable. They've, they've spent, you know, they'll be almost two years in strength and conditioning and be bigger, stronger, better equipped to handle SEC defensive backs. And I'm talking about Kobe Prentice and Kendrick Law and Isaiah Bond, who's the fastest guy on the team. I asked a guy that would know, by the way, the other day, pretty fun. I, I talked to a guy who would know. I said, uh, who's, I said, I think I know, but who's the fastest guy on the team? He, it didn't take long for him to, to think it through. He said, oh, I, so pretty exciting because now Bond is the fast guy on the team and actually knows the route. Yeah, that is – that helps. Because if he's the fastest guy on the team and doesn't know the routes, boy, he could get ugly. So anyway. Lou Holtz, Lou Holtz, one of my favorite football quotes of all time, and it is funny, but it's also absolutely true when he said uh, an overrated <laughs> trait in football is speed and an underrated trait is intelligence. Because if they're not smart, they just run to the wrong place quicker. <laughs> that's, that's a good point. By the way, I'm going to tell a quick story that I heard on uh, that's nothing to do with Alabama. But the play-by-play -play guy, uh, Chris Doring, was on uh, one of these shows. And he was talking about how his play-by-play -play guy, I forget the name, uh, they were trying to figure out how to say Holden Gurner, the backup quarterback for Auburn, that some people may think is going to start this year. And they, they don't know if it's Garnier or Gurner or Greeny or whatever the hell it was. And, they, and his mom, Janet Gurner, comes up to him, like says, are you calling the game? They're like, yeah, because I guess there are only like seven people there. So I guess it's pretty easy to spot them. And he said, uh, look, by the way, it's Holden Gurner. I'm his mom, Janet Gurner. It's Gurner. That's how you pronounce it, Gurner. And so they were like, okay, great, because we were wondering, like, you know, uh, nobody knew for sure. So they get to the game and they start calling the game and Holden Gurner comes in. And remember, Janet Gurner said, pronounce it Gurner. My name's Janet Gurner. I'm his mom. It's Gurner. The play-by-play -play guy goes, Holden Gurner with a nice pass. And we want to thank his mom, Karen Gurner, for letting us <laughs> Chris Doran was like, how did you get Gurner right and you just called her a Karen? <laughs> That's, that's pretty funny. Hey, you know what's funny is, is that guys like Doring and, and his buddy who are like, how do you pronounce these names? I, I we, Me and you talk about it all the time. But once they're on the team, it's pretty simple. Maybe here, here's a, a life hack for people that don't know this. If you want to know how to pronounce an Alabama player's name, so turn your volume up on your computer. Go to the roster on RollTide.com. The roster is the, the, the school's official site. Go to the roster on, on RollTide.com with your volume up. Scroll to a player's name, and on it it'll say, you know, Miles Kitzelman. And next to Miles Kitzelman's name on the roster, there'll be something that looks like an ear. I'm serious. It looks like an ear. Click on the ear, and you'll hear a voice say out loud, Miles Kitzelman. Yeah, it's it's all on the web. It's on the media guide. It's on, not the media guide, on, on the roster mm -hmm. on RollTide.com. There is a pronunciation guide for every player on the team. Now, with recruits, we don't have such a thing. But anyway, that's just helpful. I bet, I bet at least one person out there did not know that. Yeah, Jimmy is correct, y'all, because I did it for Ty Simpson, and it goes, you are a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> In a robot voice. That's my Tandy. We, we did not even put an ear on the <laughs> Ty Simpson. 
because you're supposed to know how to say Simpson. You even reference the Simpsons five times a show. Close, close your computer and walk <laughs> into the ocean. Um, okay. I'm not sure why I picked Miles Kitzelman. That one's pretty straight up, too. That was, I'll I tell you, that, that, was, a random dude. that was very good. Um, <laughs> so anyway, all right, that's going to do it for today. Uh, we will be back tomorrow. Y'all join us in. Until then, roll out, everybody. Roll out.